permanency case manager with to engage. Thank you. Ms. Gillette. Crystal Gillette to engage permanency supervisor. Thank you. And I'm Emily Miller. I represent the mother, Darlene Hauer, who is joining us from TDCJ. I believe she's unmuted. And Ms. Hauer, if you would please introduce yourself to the court. I'm Darlene Warren, uh, the mother of the four kids. I'm Patrick Howard. I'm the attorney for Alan Hauer. I don't believe Alan Hauer is present today. I did send him the link to instructions. So I believe he has notice. I'm Chelsea Timmons. I'm the attorney and guardian ad litem for the children, the subject of this suit. Ms. Moore, how are we proceeding today? Well, uh, that's partially up in the air, Judge, depending on how you rule on uh, the motion to modify and uh, Ms. Miller's uh, motion to strike the motion to modify. This was the case in which the um, final order uh, was uh, inadvertently not signed by the court uh, when it was originally entered. It was signed <laughs> later. And so our motion to modify was filed before the court had actually signed the final order. And I believe that's the basis of Ms. Miller's um, motion to strike is that uh, the motion to modify uh, was filed prior to the order being signed. Uh, so there's that issue that really needs to be resolved. We also have a relinquishment from uh, Mr. Howard's client uh, that I think we can prove up either way. However, the court rules on the motion to modify and motion to strike. I think we could go ahead and get that issue off the table and resolve today. Uh, and then it kind of be up to the court where we go from here as far as the issue regarding the mother. Ms. Miller? Thank you, Your Honor. We did file a motion to strike because there was no motion um, on file to that could be modified when the when the motion was filed. So we would urge that the, the motion to strike be granted and that the state be required to refile, um, refile their petition uh, or their motion. And we would also, uh, if we do get to the merits of the of that motion today, we would also assert that there has been no material change in circumstances warranting uh, the filing of the motion. Uh, Mom is in safe peace. She's doing exactly what the state uh, wanted her to do and agreed to in the mediated settlement agreement. Um, it's filed within a year. And so we would um, alternatively assert that the motion was filed, um, was not filed in good faith and is not right. All right, Mr. Howard, do you have a position on this? Well, uh, Ms. Morris, correct, my client has executed a relinquishment. Um, kind of had a long time come in as far as his thought process on that. Really, our, we don't. I don't know if we have a uh, dog in the fight, for lack of better words, except we have no problem with the relinquishment being proved up as far as it being executed uh, correctly and but as far as going forward on terminating his rights, I'm not sure that that's appropriate until we have a resolution with the mom. All right. And um, the relinquishment that was filed, and I'll take judicial notice that a relinquishment was filed on February 3rd of 2023 on behalf of your client. That was not contingent upon anything. Is that correct? No, the relinquishment was not contingent on anything. All right, thank you, sir. Ms. Timmons? Your Honor, it would be my contention that uh, Ms. Miller's objection as far as the timing is, is a moot point. I mean, the court made orders in court back in June when we had the final hearing. Uh, the fact that it didn't make it into paper doesn't change the fact that those orders have been valid and existed since that point in time. So I do think that we should move forward with the motion to modify. I also agree with Mr. Howard. I don't see if you decide not to do so on both. I think it makes sense to do both at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to grant the motion to strike. Um, it was the pleadings were premature on the motion to modify. I do believe that the department needs to refile those. If they choose to do so, we'll take up the merits of the motion to modify at that time and a setting at that time. 
will transition this hearing today to a permanency hearing. And I will hear um, evidence on the uh, filed affidavit of relinquishment for the father and how the child is doing in the placement. So okay. Ms. Moore, if we could proceed with the permanency after final hearing, please. Absolutely, I'll call Ms. Hackney. Ms. Hackney, what is your connection to the children in this case? I'm the permanency case manager. Okay, and um, a ways back, there was a mediated settlement agreement and um, you're familiar with what, what's occurred with regard to the motions and various things, is that correct? Yes. Okay, um, and so there's, it's gonna be a little bit longer before we get things finally resolved, but um, <clears throat> if we can, let's talk about the placement of the children. First of all, are they all placed together? No, they are no longer placed all together. Chase is in a separate placement. Okay. All right. So uh, there's four children and uh, are they, are the three of them together and Chase is separate or? Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Together and Chase is um, in a different location. So where are the three uh, placed together? They are. They have remained in the same placement that they were. Okay. In. And who is that with? Is that with a, a foster in a foster home or kinship or? That is a foster placement. Foster placement. Okay. And so let's talk about that for a minute. How um, how's that foster placement going for these three children? It's going very well for these three children. All right. Uh, are all of their medical, dental, educational, psychosocial needs being met? Yes, they are. All right, and they all current on um, their medical and dental appointments and vision appointments and that sort of thing? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, now about 14 and a half, I guess. Am I right on that? Yes. Uh, uh, and um, how's he doing in school? He's doing good in school. As his last report card, he had A's and B's and then he had one, that, one C, it was a 78. I wish I could say the same for mine, but I'll move on. Um, and um, how's he doing in school? He's doing good in school. He um, has a little trouble concentrating with his ADHD. They're still trying to find the right combination on his medicines so that he can concentrate better. But he likes school and he's doing well. Okay. So he is on some psychotropic medication. Yes, he is. Is not, if I remember correctly. Is that right? is now he he agreed to be tested for ADHD and take the medication just recently. Okay. All right. Um I haven't covered all of the hearings in this case so I'm I'm trying to refresh my memory as I go along. Um are the medications though do they seem to be working for the, these two children? Yes, they do. Okay. And are they being monitored by the uh, prescribing physician as they should be? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, and so, um, and let's talk about on any kind of medication. No, she's not. Okay. And, uh, how's she doing? She's doing great. She recently has, has finally completed potty training successfully enough that she can move from her daycare to a preschool and she gets to enroll in, um, some gymnastics or dance classes now. Okay. All right. And um, so the placements meeting all of their needs, is that correct? Yes, they are. Okay. And should this eventually end up in a termination of, of the parental rights of both parents, are they a potential adoptive placement? Yes, it is. Okay. What is, um, I mean, is that the goal then if uh, termination of both parents occurs? Yes, it is. All right. Now, with regard to Chase, where is he placed? He is placed in a separate foster home within 30 minutes of the other children. All right. And what's the reason for him being in a separate home? He's had a lot of behavioral issues and was being aggressive with the other children. And so for everyone's safety, he was separated and he wanted to be moved. Okay. And uh, I may suspect that the siblings maybe wanted him moved also. Since he has moved, they've said a lot about him being mean and other things that he had done that, that the foster parent was not aware of. So it seems to be the best thing for all of them. 
Okay. Now the placement that he's in, uh, again, is it a potential adoptive placement? I don't believe so, no. Okay, all right. Uh, what, excuse me, what would ultimately, if um, termination does occur, uh, what would ultimately then be the plan for Chase? The hope is that if he can get his therapy and his medications, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And if he can get all of that worked on, the, the other foster parent has not given up on him being reunited with his siblings. And she constantly reminds them that Chase is still their brother, even though he's not in the home. So she, she has not ruled out that option. Okay. So he's on medication as well. He is. All right. And is that being uh, monitored um, timely as it's supposed to be by the prescribing physician? Yes, it is. Okay. And does the medication seem to be working or are they still trying to get the right medications? Where did we stand on that? They're still working on the combinations for that. This was a fairly recent diagnosis. Okay. All right. Um, do the siblings have any visitation with each other at all? They have weekly visitation um, supervised by a two engage worker mm -hmm. down there has refused. He doesn't want any contact at all and have mentioned not going, but they come around and, and they go. Okay. And what about uh, Chase? Does he look forward to those visits or? He goes to them. He, he doesn't. Um, you know, he doesn't refuse to go. He hasn't made any comments that make me think he will. So, okay. I mean, he does participate in them. All right. Um, but as far as um, the continuation of the visits, do we believe that's in their, in all of their best interest to at least keep trying these visitation to keep the sibling connection alive? Yes, especially since the hope is that they will all be back in the same home. Okay. Uh, is there anything um, else about uh, either the children or the placements that you feel like the court needs to know about for today's hearing? No, I don't believe so. Okay. And um, Judge, I I hate to tell you, it's I, I can't remember whether you said you'd like to hear the circumstances of the relinquishment today. Uh, I know you wouldn't make a ruling on it, but did you want me to prove that up today as well? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hackney, were you involved in uh, obtaining the um, relinquishment or uh, affidavit of voluntary relinquishment uh, from Mr. Hower? No, I was not. Okay. Um, how did you know that that had occurred? Um, Mr. Howard emailed me and let me know that it was at the courthouse to be picked up. Okay. All right. Um, have you, when was the last time you had any kind of conversation with the father, Mr. Howard? It's been probably November since we've had anything. I mean, and then it was by text. Okay. Uh, were you aware that, uh, he had been contemplating, uh, signing a relinquishment? Yes, on the way to the last court hearing, he told me he was going to be signing it that day. So okay. I knew that he was thinking about it. Okay. And now, so you weren't physically present uh, for the signing of the of the relinquishment, though. Is that correct? No, ma'am. Okay. I mean, that is correct. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, sometimes us lawyers phrase things in a double negative kind of way or uh, poorly, let's just say that. Um, is there um, any, do you have any reason to believe, though, uh, that Mr. Howard did not sign it freely and voluntarily? No, ma'am. Have you had any indication from him that he was forced to sign it or that coerced or made any promises or anything along that line? No, ma'am. Okay. And um, so once you picked it up from the courthouse, then um had it been left for you, what, at the clerk's office or at the court or what? It was left in the clerk's office and it was right before the ice storm. So there was probably a week delay of me getting it filed from when it was signed. Okay. All right. 
Uh, has anybody at any point since you've had possession of it uh, contacted you to say, no, this, you know, don't, don't file it. It was, you know, forced or coerced or anything like that. No. And do you believe, um, is there a, the intention by anyone to uh, allow Mr. Howard to continue any communication that he might choose uh, to have or any connection he might have? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll pass the witness. Ms. Miller. Thank you. All right. Ms. Hackney, is there any therapy between the siblings? We had attempted the therapy with the siblings. Um, when was that? After the last hearing, we tried. When was for that? I believe the last hearing was, I'm not sure. Okay. Was it several months ago? Yes. And have you again attempted um, therapy between the siblings to remedy this rift or issue or problem that's going on? We are looking for a new therapist. The one that they saw before um, only does online and we felt like if it was going to work, it's going to need to be in person. So the, the caregiver has a list of names and she's checking on that. So, so they can't Are refuse. You checking, um, hold on just a second. Are you checking on it as well? Or have you left that um, to the hands of the placements? I located a list of names and provided that to the foster parent. Okay. But you haven't attempted to set up any therapy um, between the siblings. You've just no, left I it to them, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you think that as a temporary managing conservator of the children, that it would be appropriate for you to take those reins into your hand and set that up? I can do that. Okay. And had you advised Ms. Warren of the placement change of the oldest child? I sent a I mean, letter, but according to the information I got from you, she did not receive it. Okay. So you sent her a letter with the placement change in it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you have a copy of that letter? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you could send that to me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. And so I think that you sent her letters um, in October, November, December, and January of this year. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you didn't send those certified or provide any um, proof to me other than the alleged dates that you mailed those, correct? Correct. Okay. Do you plan on sending communication to her certified in the future? Yes, ma'am. I can do that. And will that begin this month? Yes. Okay. So I think that the, that what you said in our communication yesterday was that you left the letters on your administrative assistance desk to be mailed just regular snail mail to um, her TDCJ unit in Dayton. Is that correct? We have a box where mail is left for her next to the meter, but yes, I did leave it for her to mail. Okay. And um I believe yesterday I advised you that Ms. Warren hadn't seen any of that communication nor had the law library, correct? Correct. And you don't have any reason to disbelieve that or to um, dispute that, right? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, so you're aware that Ms. Warren is still the temporary possessory conservator of the children, correct? Correct. So you have an obligation to communicate with her monthly and provide services to her while she's in TDCJ, right? Yes. Who have you contacted at the unit to find out what services are available to her? I haven't done that. I have sent her parenting packets. Hold on just a second, please. My question was, who have you contacted staff-wise at TDCJ to find out what services are available to her? Nobody. Okay. Um, do you think that it would be a good idea to contact her unit, which is a women's unit in Dayton, Texas, to find out what is available to her as a as an inmate or participant in the program? Yes, I can do that. When can you do that? Um, I can do that by the end of the week. Okay. Um, 
do you think that um, it would have made sense after you had not heard from Ms. Warren for um, at least six of the months that she's been in safe P to contact me and let me know that you were having trouble communicating with her? Yes, I should have contacted you. Okay. Could you do that in the future if you don't hear from her? Yes, ma'am. Because obviously she's here, um, she's interested in this hearing and in um, how her children are doing, uh, and this is the first she's heard of how her children are doing since she um, was placed in safe P last August, correct? Correct. Okay, no further questions. Mr. Howard, any questions? Just a few follow-up questions, Your Honor. Ms. Hackney, um, Going back to the relinquishment, uh, and I think you testified of this, but just to make it clear, you were not present when that relinquishment was done. In fact, you didn't even know it was being done, did you? No, I did not. But a few days later, uh, you received a copy of it, and as the managing conservator or an agent of the managing conservator, uh, you signed uh, your consent to it. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now, uh, it's also true, though, that you had conversations with Mr. Howard in the past about signing a relinquishment previously. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, more or less, when was the last time that Mr. Howard worked any services for you? I believe he showed up for a drug screen in December, but then he refused to do it. So yes. it's been longer than that. And, but services were available to him, weren't they? Yes, they were. A including uh, visits with their, his children. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, I think also there was a possibility of therapy with his children. Correct. Okay. And he never participated in any of that therapy, did he? He participated in an intake and then never, he couldn't be contacted again after that. Okay. Uh, and same thing with the visits. It's been a good while since he had visits with his kids. Correct. And so is it fair to say from your perspective and working with Mr. Howard, uh, even though he signed the relinquishment uh, end of January, he had really stopped participating in the CPS case or at least the services a good while back. Yes, it is. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Ms. Timmons, any questions? No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Moore, anything further? Judge, I'll uh, go ahead and offer uh, the um, relinquishment I have not, as you know, covered all of the various hearings in this case, and so I'm not familiar with whether or not there are exhibits already, um, so I'm not sure what number um, it should be, but I would offer it maybe as exhibit A uh, in case there are numbered exhibits, but I'd offer the uh, uh, what's been filed as exhibit A, petitioner's exhibit A. And the court's previously taken judicial notice of that document that's contained within its file that was filed on February 3rd of 2023. But if it's offered as an exhibit, is there any uh, objection, Ms. Miller? No objection, Your Honor. Mr. Howard? I have no objections. Ms. Simmons? No objection. All right, then that will be admitted as an exhibit for purposes of this hearing. Anything additional, Ms. Moore? No, nothing further, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Miller? I will call um, Darlene Warren, please. All right. Thank you. Ms. Warren, I'm sorry. Um, Your Honor, I do not have any further questions for um, Ms. Hackney. I don't know if I'm answering the correct question, but I do have some questions of Ms. Warren at the appropriate time. It is the appropriate time. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Just wanted to double check. All right, Ms. Warren, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you'll need to be sure to speak up um, because the court reporter is taking down everything that you say today. Um, now, you have been in safe peace since August of 2022. Is that correct? No, ma'am. I got here on October 14th. October. Okay. Wrong mm -hmm. month. I apologize. So, October. Um, and you heard my, my communication with Ms. Uh, Hackney earlier today. 
Have you received any communication from her or from anybody else from to engage since you've been in jail? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, and by jail, I mean safe P, of course, correct? Yes, ma'am. No, I haven't received anything. Okay. You haven't received any letters about the status of your children or uh, any parenting packets for you to complete? No, ma'am. Okay. And you are how far through your um, time at Safe P right now? The 11th, well, the 14th will be five months I've been here. Okay. And so you are on a nine month program. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so your expected release date from Safe P is around July 11th of this year. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then you you've used some terminology before. I don't remember exactly what they call it when they send you somewhere else, but you may be going to a, a halfway house after this. Is that right? Either halfway house or four C's, but I find out exactly what it'll be in April. What they okay. call a placement call. Placement call. Okay. And then you said, or the four C's, what does that mean? You go home and you just work the program. You still work the program, but it's kind of in your home too. Okay. So let's talk about the program. Um, tell me what all services, um, and I'm, I'm using CPS words, but what all activities and programs you are involved in while you're at uh, Safe P. I join or I attend AA and NA four to five times a week. And then I'm an expediter, which is kind of like a job over the pod. Um, I'm attending parenting. They had parenting classes, but I was too late to get into them. But I'm attending them March 11th. That'll be when I start. And then- hey, Hold on just a second, darling. Let me, let me break down some of your answer here. So you said that you were an expediter for the pod. That's kind of like a secretary or a clerical or organizational position for the pod. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's a job. It's a job. Okay. And how many, how many hours a week do you work at this job? 20. 20 hours. Okay. Yes, and okay. how many women are in your pod? There are 64. Okay. So you're kind of running herd over the 64 women in your, in your pod, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, so the next thing that you mentioned was parenting, and that begins on March 11th. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and how long of a course is that? It's 12 weeks, and then you get a certificate at the end. Okay, and then um, your counseling, how often do you meet with an individual counselor? Uh, once a month. Okay, and then how often do you have group counseling or, um, well, I guess group counseling is the right term. Uh, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day. Okay, and that is like, say that again? Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Okay, and that is led by a licensed professional counselor, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, and you do that five days a week? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What are some of the, you know, without telling me what y'all talk about in there, what are some of the topics that you all cover in that group meeting? Uh, we have anger management classes. We have uh, substance abuse classes. We have alcohol, drugs in the brain. We have commitment to change, cognitive thinking. There's 12 to 13 different topics that we talk about. Orientation. Okay, so you kind of rotate among those 12 to 13 topics? Yes, ma'am. Each, each but day that covers... Each... I'm sorry. No, you go ahead, please. Each day, there's four different classes, and depending on the counselors, we have, like, encounters, process, you get to talk about what's on your mind, um, but every day, there's four different classes. Okay, very hour. good. And that is all between your 7 a.m. to 11 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, if you start class at 7 a.m., when do you have breakfast? Uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. Unbelievable. Okay, so tell me what else you're doing besides your uh, daily group, monthly counseling, anger management, your expediter work, your parenting classes. What other activities are you engaged in at Safe P? I go to, I'm in a faith-based dorm, so I go to church every, win, every Wednesday. It's every Thursday. Saturday and Sunday, and then we have Bible study in there, and then we do alternative treatment, which is paperwork that the counselors gave us, um, 
we're busy all the time, basically. Okay. So you have homework too? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Um, and so you haven't received um, any updates on your on your children while you've been been in safe pee, right? No, ma'am, nothing at okay. all. Is that something that you would like to happen? Yes, yes, very much so. Okay. Would you like some pictures of your children? Yes, yes, that would be awesome. Okay, and you recall that we had a mediation in your case um, less than a year ago in in may of last year do you remember I'm sorry, that i'm sorry do you remember that we had a mediation in your case um in may of last year yes ma'am okay and there were some very very strict rules that we agreed to um in order for your rights not to be terminated at that time correct yes ma'am and one of those provisions was that um, you would um, enter um, inpatient treatment if that was what was um, required by your substance abuse assessment or if that is what is ordered, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And kind of by hook or by crook, um, you didn't really want to go, but um, we got you into safe pee last October. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and do you feel like in Safe P you're doing everything um, that you can be doing um, in order to continue to have a relationship with your children and potentially get your children back? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And is that what you want to do? Yes, definitely. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Warren, do you have an email address there? Did you say Ms. Warren? Yes. I don't have any access to a computer. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Howard, any questions of this witness? No questions of this witness. Thank you. Ms. Moore? A few, Your Honor. Um, just so that we're clear, Ms. Warren, uh, you didn't surrender yourself to uh, Safe P. You had to be rearrested. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you didn't... You didn't go voluntarily um, by hook or by crook, I guess, as Ms. Miller said, you ended up not surrendering. You were supposed to, though, isn't that correct? Yes, ma'am. I was a day late, I believe. But you ended up um, uh, having to be arrested as on a warrant as opposed to just voluntarily surrendering. I'm going to object, Your Honor. That's been asked and answered by Ms. Warren. Good thing. Um, how many uh, letters have you written to your children since you've been uh, in Safe P? I wrote one whenever I was in county, but I never got any confirmation stating that my that Diane got it. Mm. There was nothing, and I had I couldn't bring their address with me because all I could have all I had was my Bible, and they don't let you bring anything in here. Okay, so um, what you're saying is that you had no way once you got to Safe P, you had no way of sending any kind of uh, letter to anybody? No, ma'am, nothing at all, because I didn't um, even have her address. Did you have uh, a way to communicate with your attorney? I can't make phone calls just right out. You got you have to be on the visitation list, and then they have to approve it. I'm not allowed to just call right out. That That's not my... Did, did you have a way in any form to communicate with your attorney since you've been in there? I sent a mail... I sent a letter to her, but I, it didn't go to the right address because I wasn't informed about it, her changing the address. Okay. Um, you, did you think of um, communicating to your attorney to say, hey, I need the address or anything? I just said- I'm gonna I object was, again, Your Honor. That has been asked and answered in the previous question. Overruled. Did you think to communicate with your attorney to say, hey, I need the address so I can write my kids? I just told you that I sent a letter to her. You, you sent letter, a letter to, to Ms. Miller? Yes, but it went to the wrong address. I just said that. Okay. So is this the first time you've talked to Ms. Miller since you've been in safety? I'm going to object, Your Honor. That's attorney-client privileged, and she is not required to answer that question, the contents of what we spoke about, or even when we spoke. I believe that I am entitled to ask when or if she's had communication, I am not in any manner suggesting that she should answer about the content of her communication. 
Your Honor, it's well established that whether an attorney it's has communicated. It's his thing. Thank you. All right. Uh, who else? Have you had um, any contact with Mr. Howard since you've been in safety? Are you talking about Alan? Yes. He called me one time whenever I first got here, but that was it. Okay. And when was that? When I first got here. I don't know the exact date. It was like a week after I got here. But he didn't say anything about the kids. He contacted you, but he didn't say anything about the children at all? No, ma'am. He just asked me how I was doing. Oh. I'll pass the witness. Ms. Timmons, any questions? No questions, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Miller. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Howard, you sent your previous letter to me to when seven, I have moved to. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the address that continues to appear on all of the two engage um, permanency reports and all of their communications despite having changed for many months, despite having tried for many months to change that address. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and so if you would have been able to get through to me, um, you obviously would have tried had you had that new address, correct? I'll yes, object to the leading. <laughs> I get the point. We can move on. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't have any further questions. I have one additional question, if I may. We're at the end of our time period for the permanency hearing purposes today. Um, and uh, I need to make some findings with regard to the child and permanent children and permanency today. I will hear any additional information at a, at a motion to modify setting if that's requested. Um, can I hear from Ms. Timmons about the children, please? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. My the reason that Chase has been was moved was basically the interactions between him and the other children. That even as Ms. Miller put that rift between the children. Since he has been moved, um, all reports are that he gets along wonderfully in the house. There are zero behavioral issues. There are two other adopted boys in that home that are very close to his age. Supposedly, he gets along with them incredible, like very well, and there's basically just no issues. I that leads me to believe that if we could repair that relationship between the children, that all four children could be successful in the same home, whether that is with the current placement or parents or you know wherever. Uh, he's placed in the future. So I don't know exactly how to go about doing that. I would like to, I, I mean, I think that professionals need to be involved in that. So, I, and I do understand that Jaden has refused to do, he refuses to go to visits with his sibling. He refuses to do therapy with Chase and Jaden can be and is extremely stubborn um, but surely there's something that we can be doing to, to help that. So I'm certainly open to any sort of suggestions and going to, one thing I will say is that, and I just heard that, heard this recently, but some allegations that perhaps the placement where the three children are didn't really help that situation between the kids. There's some allegations of maybe her kind of taking sides. Um, and I do know that Chase feels kind of ganged up on all three kids on one side and then him on the other side. So I don't know if getting her involved is, I mean, like in potentially in some therapy or something, I don't know if that's beneficial or if that's doable. And that's not something that I've spoken to her about at all. Um, I think that's really all I have to report right now. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Timmons. I will find that the court has jurisdiction to hear the case in the following orders or in the best interest of the children. I do find that their current placements, um, both the three kids together and Chase's placement are in their best interest for now. Um, I am gonna ask that um, 
I know that there has been some resistance by the older ones uh, to attending therapy, but I think that it needs to continually be um, a part of their service plan and something they need to do. So I am going to order again that all the children attend therapy um, and that there is specific communication from Ms. Hackney to those therapists that the court would like the children to engage in family therapy. And I need a therapeutic recommendation on when and how to start that. So I understand that the placement agency for foster family homes is the one that usually helps them set up the service. But in this particular instance, Ms. Hackney, I would like you to be involved in that. And I would like you to have communication with those therapists that the goal is family therapy and how should that be accomplished and when from each of the children's therapists. Um, and um, I do believe that that is gonna be a necessity moving forward, um, whether we move very slow with that or we start it in the next couple of months, um, I will leave up to the professionals, but the end goal is family therapy. So I want them to know that that's what we're working towards so that they know what they need to be doing in their individual therapies to get their clients ready for that. Um, I also am gonna order that um, all communication with Ms. Warren, that she be given the monthly updates and the permanency reports. If you could collect the permanency reports from the last two hearings and make sure that's part of the mailing that you sent to Ms. Warren now that um, you have her address there and uh, that you also send those to Ms. Miller. Um, um, and, and those can be sent via email, but um, I certainly would uh, keep the information on what I sent so that you would have the ability to show the date and time and manner in which you sent them to Ms. Warren in case, again, she doesn't receive them. Sometimes it can be tricky in safety to get information to them because I know they like that to be an inclusive secluded program so that they can work on themselves. Certainly does sound like Ms. Warren is working on herself while she's in safety, and I commend you for that. Um, Thank you. Um, I, I would ask too that those updates and permanency reports contain um, recent pictures of the children too as well. I do find that those current placements should be maintained while the department is uh, <laughs> the uh, permanent managing conservator and the parent is maintained as the possessory conservator, parent being Darlene Warren. I will accept the affidavit of relinquishment of Mr. Alan Hauer. Um, today, I will um, take under advisement the termination of his parental rights till our next setting, whether that be on a modification or the permanency hearing setting, um, since there was no request to terminate prior to today. Our next setting will be August the 3rd at 9.40 a.m. And that is um, set as a permanency after final setting. And it is set to be virtual if there is no objection. If there is a request for a modification setting or a different type of setting before then, the court can accommodate that. We'll just need a motion for the setting. Um, Ms. Moore, is there any objection to a virtual setting in that on that day? Uh, no objections. Ms. Miller? No objection, Your Honor. Mr. Howard? No, Your Honor. Ms. Timmons? No, Your Honor. All right. So we'll have that virtually. And um, Ms. Warren, that may or may not be after you're released from safety. Once you're released from safety, it'll be your responsibility to get in touch with Ms. Miller.